March was a brutal month for trading, and the S&P 500 index was down by almost 6% over the month. But despite the chaos, my algo trading bot held steady. It finished the month around break-even with a very small profit. In this video, I'll break down exactly how it performed, walk through the trades it took, what went well, what didn't, and some key lessons that I'm taking forward. This is a summary of the performance for March. This was on a demo account. I'm still refining and testing my bot, so I don't really want to risk real money yet. So my trading bot took nine trades, four were winners and five losers, giving me a win rate of 44%, which is in line with my backtest results. My bot aims for 1.5 take profit ratio, but it actually only achieved 1.41. And I will talk more about that in a little bit. Overall, it made a very modest profit for the month, which worked out to 0.7%. But still, compared to the performance of the S&P, I would say it did pretty well. Now let's go over some of the trades that I took for this month. Quick disclaimer here that none of this is trading advice. Make sure you always do your own research. My trading bot uses an opening range breakout strategy. It takes the first candle of the day, uses that as its opening range, and then waits for a breakout above that for long entries. So here the red candle is the first candle, and this purple box that I've drawn is my opening range. Price broke through on this candle and I entered at the open of the next one. And although the price did go in my direction, ultimately it wasn't enough and it came back down to hit the stop loss. I then didn't get any more trades for about a week until I suddenly got two in the same day. It's the same setup, so the white box here is the opening range. Price broke through it on this green candle, but then it immediately turned around and hit the stop loss on the other side. But then only two candles later, it broke through again. This time it carried on all the way up to my take profit. If I was trading this manually, I might hesitate to take a second trade so quickly after taking a loss. But this is where a trading bot is handy because it's completely emotionless and it just follows the rules. The next trade wasn't particularly good. The opening range was really big and that meant that my stop loss was massive. Price initially retraced, but then it did go in the correct direction. But the size of my stop loss meant that my take profit was also really big and it was never hit. So in the end, after a full day, the trade eventually closed out for a loss. So it was a little bit of a shaky start there in the first couple of weeks, but then I had another winning trade. This was quite a nice setup. The opening range was a decent size, so my stop loss wasn't too big, and the take profit was hit pretty easily. The price did return back to this level a couple of times, but it never really came close to the stop loss. Then the next day, I had another disappointing trade. Again, the same thing happened as a few days before, where the opening range was quite big, and although price did move quite significantly in the right direction, the size of the stop loss meant that the take profit was also huge. So ultimately, this one turned out to be a losing trade, despite price breaking out in the correct direction. My trading bot actually didn't take this trade though. And the reason for this isn't anything clever. It's just because it crashed. And by the time I realized that and restarted it, it was too late. So I'll put this one down to just dumb luck and a lesson learned. This next trade was a really nice one for a couple of reasons. First of all, again, it was a small range. The breakout wasn't particularly convincing and it did retest and go quite far into the range, but the stop loss was never threatened and the take profit was then finally hit. But the trade actually ended up being held over the weekend and there was a gap up. And as a result of this, it actually closed above the take profit, which was pretty nice. I then had another bad trade the day after that and I actually have to zoom out to get the whole thing into the screen. So this one again had a really big range. It broke out quite a bit before I managed to get into the trade. So already the stop loss is really big, means that the take profit target is really far away. Price came back and retested this level, but it did continue in the right direction for quite a while. So it was disappointing that it never quite made it to the take profit and then ultimately turned around and hit the stop loss. Things didn't improve much the next day. Again, a pretty big range, a strong breakout, and the price did actually continue in that direction for quite a bit. But the size of the stop and the size of the take profit meant that it just came nowhere near it. So ultimately, it came out for another loss. But then thankfully, on the 31st of March, we finished the month with a profitable trade. And this one was pretty smooth. A decent size opening range, a little breakout with an initial retracement, and then price just carried on all the way to the take profit. Even though I backtested this strategy in quite a lot of detail, actually trading it for a month showed me quite a few things that I hadn't considered in the backtest. The first one is latency. Even though my bot is really quick, there is often a one to two second delay between when it detects an entry and the order is actually placed. And that can often mean that I get slightly worse entries, especially if price is moving quickly. On individual trades, that's not huge, but it does add up over time. The second issue is slippage, and this is a big one. For example, this trade on the 27th of March closed out in the middle of the night. 
when trading volumes are low. So to add insult to injury, not only was this a losing trade, it actually lost more than where my stop loss is positioned. Interestingly, slippage does work in my favor on winning trades because the same thing happens on take profit if the price is moving strongly in that direction. Slippage isn't something that I included in my back test, but it can have a pretty big effect on the results. So it's something I'm going to have to think about going forward. Earlier, I said that my trading bot aims for a 1.5 to 1 take profit, but it only achieves 1.41. And that is primarily because of slippage. So if a trading strategy has a small edge, it can easily be made unprofitable by something like this. As far as the strategy itself, there are a few things that I noticed from the trades that I looked at. One major thing is that having a really big opening range results in a really big stop loss and therefore a big take profit target. So even when the trade goes in the correct direction, the target is just too far away. So I may need to consider whether it's worth putting a limit on the size of the opening range and skipping out trades where the range is just too big. The other thing I've noticed is that my rule of waiting for a candle to break through the upper range and then close above it might actually be hindering some of my entries. The reason I added this rule was because I wanted to filter out fake breakouts where the price would break through the line but then come back and close below it again. But waiting for this confirmation seems to be having its own negative effect anyway because I enter at a worse price, meaning I have a bigger stop loss and the take profit target is further away. It's difficult to draw these kind of conclusions just from a handful of trades, so it's something I would need to go back and maybe retest again in my backtest. If you want to see how my bot performs in April, then make sure to subscribe to be notified.